I had a great conversation with the inspector and I was going to have him come out to do a rough end inspection because I'm just about there, or I'm, I'm pretty much am there. Um, but after talking to him this morning, great guy, we kind of decided on setting up the uh, pressure test for the drain waste and vent and the water lines. Um, I thought that they had to stand pressure for a lot longer than they need to. Um, so we just said, hey man, why don't we just kind of get the pressure test set up as well. That way I can kind of come out and kill two birds with one stone, which is great. So um, the good thing was that I was able to ask him a few questions while I was on the phone with him in regards to, you know, some of the vent questions I had. I have a, I don't know if you remember back in the, some of the older videos, I had talked about um, tying in the utility sink vent and the bathroom main three inch stack because they were probably about nine feet apart from each other and I wasn't really sure if it, he would buy and so I talked to him this morning no big deal on any of the stuff I asked him he was okay with tying the vents together definitely close enough um, and they had, you know a bunch of odd questions I had for him that um, I guess I was concerned about but he seemed totally fine with um, so yeah I mean essentially uh, where I thought he was gonna come out and do a rough in inspection we're gonna try and kill two birds by doing the pressure test as well so with that being said, I'm kind of back at it on the, uh, the drain waste and vent line. This morning I came into the house and I continued this two inch line for the utility. It stopped right above that top plate and now I'm starting to basically take it up. There's the end up there and then it's gonna come across and it's gonna meet that, two, that three inch stack over there. So. cap on here I'll put the cap on the <clears throat> kitchen vent and then that way when I pressurize the drain waste and vent system you know these are all closed off you know to create a closed circuit and then when I go what after I put the roof on the metal roof then I'll cut through the roof sheeting in the metal roof and take this vent out through um, the roof vent. but for now I'll just cap it off and get them ready for testing
All right, guys, so this is the finished kitchen drain that I'm gonna use to fill the system, uh, to pressurize the system. Uh, it's, that's the uh, shark bite, the shark bite pressure gauge. Um, I think I grabbed that at Lowe's for like 15 bucks or so with the Schrader valve on the end to fill it up with air. So that's just a one and a half inch pipe, one and a half inch coupling, one and a half inch to three quarter inch reducer. And uh, it's a three quarter inch threaded with a three quarter inch by three inch um, black iron nipple in there and then with the gauge on the end. So all of the other, all of the other ends have been capped off. There's the cap for the utility sink. There's a cap inside the washer box, the washer outlet box for the laundry. The uh, vent for the kitchen sink is capped off. The bathroom vanity is capped off. The toilet has a test cap built into it until I bust it out. The shower is capped off. And for right now, the three inch stack is capped off at the top. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the connections that the excavation company made. When I put my four inch pipe through the foundation wall, the excavation company that dug my foundation is also gonna install my septic system. I need to go out and check the, the pipe that they attached to my four inch pipe that went out the foundation wall. When they were doing the foundation in a rough grade and they knew they were gonna come back next year to do the septic, my four inch line went out the wall. They added, they added a sanitary tee with a clean out, like a stack that comes up underneath my, that'll come up underneath my deck, I guess. And then they added a 20 foot piece of four inch PVC on just to clear where we needed the backfill so that we were ready for when they came back to start doing the septic. And I think you guys can see that at this point out the window. So yeah, so that's their pipe. And that's the clean out that they installed. So they put the T on, they put the clean out, the cap and the pipe. I'm gonna check their connections to make sure they're glued, to make sure they're on, uh, all that good stuff. Other than that, the drain waste and vent will be ready for pressure tomorrow. And then I'm shortly behind on the plumbing. As a matter of fact, the plumbing is good to get tested. I needed to build a loop for the hot water heater. Because I didn't install the tank, you know, we obviously need to be all the way through the system. So what I need to do is, I need to basically loop these. Now it would be easy if I could just put two 90s and loop them together. The problem is that I wanna test, I wanna test the system through the hot water. So what I'm gonna do is basically just, I'm gonna put a 90 on one side with a T on the other, connect them, and then out the one side of the T, I'll put the pressure, the pressure gauge, and hopefully that'll work. I'll just shut off the valves on the, on the uh, washer outlet box and I'll just go from there. But we're all set for tomorrow, so I'm pretty stoked. Get up tomorrow morning, have some coffee, and then come on up and get started on pressurizing everything. And like I said, it only has to hold for 15 minutes, which is great. So I'll know tomorrow whether or not I'm spending tomorrow fixing a bunch of stuff, and I'll bring you guys along with me. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, looks like it's going to be another good, nice day. A little chilly still right now, but... Uh, fixing to be nice and warm today. I'm going to try and do all the pressure tests today. So we're going to start with the drain waste and vent. Hopefully there's no issues and I can move right along to the water supply. But I'm going to walk up right now and uh, start the generator on my way up so I can get the air compressor filled. And uh, yeah, I got up this morning and went up and I capped off a couple of the open pipes, checked a couple of the pipes that the uh, excavators tied in, which weren't glued, so I'm glad I double checked those. But uh, let's see, we're gonna start the generator. So we filled up the system. We're at about 
Hey. We're at about five, about five PSI, which is really all we need to be at. I'm gonna scoot around and listen a little bit now for some leaks um, and uh, keep an eye to make sure that the pressure holds. <clears throat> We're looking good so far, so I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed, but. I didn't think that the pressure gauge was dropping over at the kitchen sink. I mean, five PSI, so hard to see it moving down. So I filled it up a little more to like seven or 10, and I did find one leak. I thought there was something real slow about it, but I did find one. It's in the vent stack, it's right there. And you know, believe it or not, I borderline remember that being a problem. And, uh, but it should be an easy fix because this is a short sweep, so I'm going to replace it with a long sweep, which should give me just enough pipe on both sides to reconnect that vent. But that was the only leak, that's the only leak I can find in the system, uh, in the crawl space, outside. So I'm pretty happy. Hopefully when I fix this, I'll fill it back up, we'll be all good. All right, hopefully got lucky and that was just the only one and we're good. All right, I'll let that set up for a few minutes and then we'll fire the generator and the compressor back up and fill that system back up with air. Okay, so it's been maybe 15 minutes or so and the pressure's holding, um, which is great. And I did just jump down into, I did jump down into the crawl space uh, just to take a good listen. Um, as much as the soap spray works, and it does, that's how I could tell where the other leak was. I could hear it too, so if you can just quiet, quiet down once you get the system all filled up, if there's a leak, you'll probably hear it. But so far, so good on the drain and vent, and now I've got the uh, plumbing lines to do. I'm gonna hold up for a little bit, let that sit for a while. All right, guys, I just walked up after about a half an hour or so to check the gauge. Mostly because I need this gauge to check the water lines. <laughs> Guess I should have just bought two to leave it on here, but um, just wanted to show you guys that I don't know if you can see, but we are holding strong at five PSI. And like I said, it's been about a half an hour. So something tells me that we're in good shape for the drain. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, disassemble this little fitting so that I can take it over and install it on the water lines. But... So we're going to cut the stub outs. The idea here is to, we're going to cut the stub outs, then we're going to put these two push on connectors together. We're going to push them onto the stub outs. We're going to come out with a piece of PEX and a male connector, and then I'm going to screw the pressure gauge on and fill it up from there. That's the idea, so hopefully that'll work. All right guys, well that's, that's the loop. So now I'll put the gauge, the other gauge on here, and then I'll fill the system up through this guy. Hopefully that'll work out all right. I am not using pipe dope because I'm gonna return these fittings. <laughs> it's like $40 worth of fittings, $50 worth of fittings that I won't need. So a little Teflon tape, hopefully that'll hold and then take everything apart, take it back.
<laughs> All right. So I need to prep. I gotta think about it a little bit because again, never done it, but just wanna make sure that you're, I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna put the shut off. I'm gonna shut off the water from the cistern to the house. That way this system pressurized all the way through the pump will stop where the water would come in. Um, that should be good there. As far as the distribution block for the PEX, you know, those lines obviously need to be open when the mana block comes to you, they're shut. So I'm gonna go down and turn the three zones on for hot and cold. And then once I do that, I should be good to at least start filling up the system and seeing if we're okay. So I think I'm gonna to have to do this a little strange. It seems like the valve stem needs to be out far enough in order to get the air compressor to feed the air. So I'm gonna fill it up high, then crank the valve stem in. Thank God I had a valve stem at that, you know, tool in my truck. But uh, I'm gonna go downstairs, spray some things, take a listen, see what's going on. And then I'll come back up and let you guys know what I find out. Okay, so I can't believe it, <laughs> but nothing seems to be leaking in the water supply line lines. I'm going to, I've got 20 PSI in there now. I'm going to jack it up to 30. Check again, then we'll jack it up to 40 as we take the valve stem back, yeah. All right, so we're around 40, 41 PSI. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and let it sit there for a while. Go have some coffee. And then I'll come back and check it to see how we're looking. All right, guys, so I didn't bring the camera along. When I came back up to check the pressure on the water lines, they had been at 40, or I, I left them at 40 PSI like I, before I shut the camera off. It was around 40. And about maybe 10 minutes later or so, I noticed, I thought it was slowly leaking. So I went back again to double check everything and I found two areas. One is the hot water line for the vanity. It looks like the PEX connection is at the copper stub out. It's just got a little bubble coming out. So I'm gonna redo that one. I'm hoping I can cut the cinch ring off and reuse the PEX line because I don't want to have to put a coupling in that line to extend the hot water half inch packs. The other area, the only other area that's leaking is the inch and a quarter reducing bushing that goes into the pump. I had a weird feeling that maybe that would be a part that leaked and because Red Lion, as well as everybody online that talks about the well pump and videos I've watched before is all about not over tightening you know, that bushing into that cast iron pump. So I think maybe I just was being safe and I maybe should have cranked it maybe another, I mean, they say hand tight and then a quarter turn or something. I mean, that, that thing was definitely in there. So maybe another half a turn, full turn, we should be in good shape. The tough part about that downstairs is that line is all together. So I'm trying to figure out whether or not I can pull the one inch polyethylene line off of the pump fittings so that I can spin that then put it back on. If not, I'm gonna to have to cut that polyethylene pipe so that I can crank the bushing in and then put a coupling back in that line. And I hate using couplings. It's just a it's just, you know, weak point in the system. Uh, I mean, they're, it's what they're made for, but I just didn't wanna to have to do it if I didn't have to. Okay, so that is the one, that little uh, connection right there is one of the uh, leaking spots. So I'm actually gonna try and cut the OD clamp off and redo it without putting in a coupling. One, I don't have a coupling. Two, I really don't want to have to put one in there. So let's see how I can make out. If not, I'm going to have to drive an hour to the store. <laughs>
Not bad. Not bad. So I'm not gonna actually nail it back in just yet until I know for sure that we're good to go. But I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. It's a little straighter and it looks like the clamp went on fairly nice. So should be in good shape. So let's go downstairs and I'm gonna fix that pump now. So guys, I know it's a little bit tough to see, but it is that bushing going into the pump that is the other leak. And uh, like I said, I was concerned about over tightening that to not mess up any of the uh, cast iron housing of the pump, but obviously another quarter turn to a half turn, I probably would have been good. So the objective here is my hope is that maybe I can take the polyethylene pipe off the fitting so that I can spin this and slide the pipe back on, cinch it back and call it a day. I don't really want to have to cut this just to spin this and put a coupling in. So we'll see what happens, but I'm going to give it a shot. I don't think you'll be able to see too much down here, but I'll bring you down when it's all done. Look the same. All right. So I was able to get the polyethylene pipe off. Um, I basically just heated up the polyethylene with a torch and then just kept, you know, basically wiggling it back and forth until I could get it off the barb fitting. So my hope is that when I go to put that all back together again, Jesus, I can't even get a good shot. Of it. Sorry. Um, when I go to put that back together again, you know that there's no issues with the cinch clamp and the poly pipe, but I'm going to go ahead now and tighten this bushing down and put everything back together again and we should be good to try everything out again. All right, so that's everything back together again. Let's see if we can fire this bad boy up. All right, guys, let's try this again. All right, guys, let's check some fittings. Right, so hopefully we made out all right on this guy. No more leaks on that guy, so we're good. Looking good, guys. No more, no more leak there at the pump. That's great. Everything else seems good, and I didn't have to cut the poly, so I'm really happy about that. All right, guys, so we're sitting at 40, 40 PSI right now. And I'm going to go ahead and let that rock and roll for about a half an hour. And then we'll come up and check everything again. The last little video was just setting the gauge at 40 PSI on the first go after fixing the leaks, um, the two leaks. Both leaks are fixed. I did find a third one and it was stupid. It's the shower test plug. It's just a plastic plug that allows you to <clears throat> close off the uh, drop your elbow to test the system. And it's plastic with a little rubber O-ring. Um, it was leaking, tightened it up, and it seems like we're good. Um, I've been sitting, I lost a little bit of PSI. I lost a little bit when I was checking the plug, but it's been sitting just below 40 for probably the last half an hour, 45 minutes. So I'm feeling pretty good. I called for an inspection because I feel like I've got everything buttoned up. Um, so hopefully nothing goes wrong between today and tomorrow. I'm just finishing cleaning up. Um, I just, <laughs> I wanna make it look nice for the inspector. But uh, just gonna clean up a little bit, blow out the house, close the door, go hang out for a little while and uh, reconvene tomorrow morning. So, so that's where we're at. 
I'm excited. Hopefully tomorrow goes well. We'll see what happens. Um, if, if something's wrong, I'll fix it, right? Um, hopefully nothing happens and I can just check off those boxes, get those, you know, passing inspection stickers and just keep moving on. But I'll bring you guys along if I can. If not, I'll follow up with you once the inspector takes off. Otherwise, have a good night. Talk to you guys later. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Shabbin Life. It is a beautiful Thursday morning. <clears throat> I have April something. And uh, although I didn't get a chance to put the camera up yesterday, I wanted to let everybody know that we passed our inspection with flying colors. We passed both our rough-in inspection and we also passed our plumbing pressure testing inspection. So, <clears throat> drain waste and vent pressure test, no problem. Water line pressure test, no problem. And the rough-in framing, no problem. Very happy for never building a house before. I was a little nervous, and, uh, but everything was really great. And fortunately, I don't know if I've said this before in a different video, I should have. Um, I really like the inspector. Uh, he's a really nice guy. He's not an alarmist. Um, he's very helpful. He's always offering, you know, for me to give him a shout if I have any questions, concerns. And what's most important to me, especially after being in trades for so long or just business, he answers his phone and he returns calls. And to me, this day and age, that's priceless. Uh, I had said to him that this house was not supposed to get built in the winter. So if that gives you any indication on having to wait for certain return phone calls or things to get done in a timely fashion, which was very difficult, especially when you're paying for it. I think I've said that before. Nothing like paying lots of money to have somebody just be lazy. But the inspector is awesome. Uh, and if you happen to watch, I appreciate it very much. <clears throat> um, and funny enough, I just met one of my neighbors, or I shouldn't say I just met them. I've met my neighbors before, but I just met them at the driveway when they were pulling down the, the main road. And we talked for a little bit, and they know the inspector as well, and we're saying just the same great things about him. Um, but again, just a really nice guy, very helpful. What I liked the most and what I could do an entire separate video on, which made me really happy, was just his excitement for creativity. You know, when I was telling him about certain things, the ship ladder for the, you know, for to get into the attic that's going to hang and, you know, the, the, the off-grid side of things and everything running off solar and stuff, he just, he was just as excited as I am. And that's great because that's what I'm looking for. That's, that's what he was looking for. That's what he hopes there's more in the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was, I was, it was very awesome just to hear him, you know, just just to see his response sometimes to me talking about what we are going to do or how we're changing things was really great. But with all that said, none, we passed. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited. So for me, that was a big hurdle. The next inspection's insulation. Then there's a drywall inspection. I don't really have to be too concerned about either one of those. I mean, it's insulation and, and uh, sheetrock. I don't even have a garage, so there's no firewall situations really here. So uh, really, it's just gonna be start insulating, inspection, sheetrock inspection, and then there's just a final. Once the final inspection's done, the inspector will basically pass all that information to the zoning officer here in my township, and then they'll issue the UNO, and hopefully we'll be good to go. But uh, that pretty much wraps it up for me here. As always, thank you guys for watching. Um, trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I would like to be able to do community posts because I think I would be a little bit better at that in regards to just taking a quick snap, maybe asking a couple polls. Um, plus, sometimes I feel like I see something and I'm like, man, I wonder what people think. You can be, you can, I always say it can be done a couple different ways. I'd like to be able to just take a picture or, or, or something and, and do a community post on the YouTube channel to get your, your feedback in regards to maybe what you guys might recommend or what maybe you have in your house that's been working well or if I've said to you guys some type of material or product that we're gonna use in our house, maybe you guys have used it before or have heard good things or bad things and can either let me know through that in comments, but I can't start doing community posts until I get to a thousand subscribers. So hopefully you guys out there can help me do that, especially since I'm not getting paid to do any of this stuff. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, if we get to a thousand, maybe I can start doing some, some of those posts that are a little bit more frequent than the videos are coming out. Again, I'm rambling as always. Thank you guys. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. It's gonna be beautiful out, it looks like, at least up in the Northeast for a, a few weeks and only getting nicer and I really am looking forward to that. It'll be nice to not freeze my butt off at nighttime as well as be able to work a little bit without having to bundle up in the Carhartt. So you guys take care, enjoy the day, and we will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.